the large model showman's engine. This is part 63, piping the steam boiler feed pump. This was a difficult job, but I got there in the end. I received a few comments from expert viewers telling me that this pump probably wouldn't fill the boiler. We shall see. This clip shows the steam pipe plumbing, and this was incredibly difficult. Not the actual steam piping to the pump, just the fitting of this steam tap converted to a T-piece. Even though this showman's engine is a large model, in certain areas there isn't much space to work. And three days later, my back is still hurting. Every morning, I wake up, get out of bed, and after visiting the bathroom, I go downstairs and make a cup of tea. Then I go into my video editing room and have a look at the previous day's comments. It's at this time I usually make my first call of the day to the Samaritans. Then I start the editing process for the daily video. This clip shows the crankshaft driven pump because I'm going to repipe it into the bunker tank. This is the large steam tap that was replaced by my T-piece, which if you've been watching the series you will realise it was made from another one of these steam taps. There are three inlets into the bunker tank. One has a U-shaped piece of pipe on it, that's just a vent, which really isn't necessary. The other two holes into the bunker tank are for the main feed to the crankshaft driven pump and the bypass from that back into the tank. This clip shows the inlet pipe to the crankshaft driven pump. The large nut is a union nut and the other one is a gland to stop foreign bodies getting into the water in the bunker tank, where the pipe goes through into the bunker tank. I'm going to modify this arrangement because the piping isn't too good, it's a bit kinked and damaged. I'm going to dispense with the vent to the bunker tank that isn't required and I'm going to make a new piece of piping to feed the pump. The job starts with a bit of a clean-up. These were originally very dirty because they are in a very dirty place on the engine, but now they are looking much better. The smaller of the two nuts, which is the gland nut, was actually packed with graphited yarn. I'm going to use a silicone o-ring. Originally I bent up a piece of copper pipe to exactly the same size as this mangled up piece, but then I decided to bend the pipe differently so it would fit into one of the other holes into the bunker tank. The water fitting was cut from the other piece of pipe and you can see it in the foreground in this image. I always like to try and save some time because it's something we're all running out of fast so I didn't make a new fitting, I just drilled out the old one and here you can see the copper coming out on the drill bit. This is one of the earliest shots before I disconnected the piping and as you can see the inlet pipe into the pump was a bit strange. In this clip you can clearly see the three holes into the bunker tank. If I call these fittings in the floor of the bunker tank 1, 2 and 3, the first one accepts the water bypass return from the pump. I silver soldered the freshly drilled out union onto a piece of pipe and I think that this is a much better arrangement. I will use fitting number 2 on the bunker tank floor for the water feed to the steam powered pump which allegedly isn't big enough to feed the boiler. I can't wait for the next episode. In this clip you can see why my back is hurting. I'm bent over in a very strange position. It's a bit like the Kama Sutra for steam engines. But maybe not quite so much fun. Anyway, that is enough of that. The pump now has a water inlet and a steam inlet. And from the driver's point of view, I'm not going to burn my hand on the steam pipe to the pump when I opened the injector steam valve. When I first bought this engine, there was a second clack fitted and I removed it, but then I found out the reason why this second check valve was fitted. Because the ball and seat arrangement on the main check valve on the boiler was not very good and it was blowing steam past. This is the cap of the second check valve and it's perfect for a water inlet from the steam pump. I fitted the cap into the chuck of my Boxford lathe threaded it tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch and here using back gear to run the lathe slowly I'm threading the hole using a 3 8 by 32 tap in the tailstock chuck. Once the tap had gone all the way through I put the lathe into reverse and it came back the other way. Now all I have to do is reverse the part in the chuck and gently deburr the hole being very careful because it's only held by the threads. Here's the part on the bench, 
All I need to do now is fit a commercial adapter. I generally do use copper washers, but mainly for effect rather than function. To seal the parts, I always use Loctite 542. To assemble the unit, I'm using two Barco spanners, and you will notice that these spanners have not damaged the hexagon part of the fitting. Barco spanners are very well made, and they don't do this. Now it's pipe cleaning time. First of all, using my polishing spindle and finishing off the job with some Brasso. This is a very dirty job. For small pieces of pipe like this, I don't use the acid bath. Just my polishing spindle, Brasso, and then a cotton cloth. The pump is piped. The exhaust pipe is in entirely the wrong place, and it's going to make my foot very warm and very wet. At this stage, I phoned the Samaritans for a second time today to ask them if they thought that the pump would actually be good enough to fill the boiler. Here's a shot from the other side, showing the piping in the bunker. And now to conclude this video, this is the best shot. The pump really looks good sat in this position, in my opinion. Is the injector finally going to work? Is this pump, which was built by my good friend Don English, going to be adequate enough to fill the boiler? All will be revealed in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and may your pumps always pump with adequate pressure. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.